it. So this is the last slide that we were getting at. I don't even think this one ever really came up, and it's not that I need you to write it down, but we were taking a look at warrants. So quick little overview. According to Toolman, what's the first part of any kind of argument that we should be interested in collecting? We want to find data, data evidence, ground, you know, all those if they're, they're interchangeable in terms of you. But you want to find evidence. From that evidence, you then do a warrant. You come up with reasoning that is going to lead to your claim. And again, understand that this is probably the opposite of the way that most of our arguments work. Um, Leah likes doing the smart debates. Which one did you do? What was your topic? Okay, and which you were laced, right? You were for shoelaces. So Leah um, couldn't really do this structure of an argument where she's going to collect evidence and then do some rational reasoning and all that kind of stuff and then come up with the claim because the way the assignment was structured, what did she start with? A claim. Now i got to find evidence that's going to fit this, uh, this conviction, this perception, and then I kind of have to do a little bit of, of an explanation for it. But if we were doing something where we wanted to figure out what would be the best kind of shoes, Blake could sit out at the corner of the street with his notebook or, you know, laptop or whatever and collect data to see how many people walk by with this type of shoe, that type of shoe, which one ends up looking best. And taking all that information, that data, coming up with, well, this is why lace shoes are better than Velcro or vice versa. But when you get something like a spar debate and you just get the topic assigned to you, you must now argue this point. You can't really naturally use the Pullman model. But his idea would be if it for issues that you are really on the fence, that you don't have a preconceived notion or bias about, you would collect that data um, and then you would be able to come up with what would be an appropriate argument. So the, the model does, it's, it's a good foundation for argument to make sure you're doing all these things, but it doesn't always necessarily be applicable to the way that most arguments. I would say, however, the warrant ends up being an important thing because while we said it's unstated, it's something that you do explicitly want to make sure we're good. Lucas, we good over there? Okay. Um, so this one, uh, that dog is probably friendly. It's a golden retriever. You have a generalization that's taking place. Most of the golden retrievers that this person has come across have been friendly, so therefore we're assuming that this dog is friendly. It must be a golden retriever. All right. So there's different types of warrants out there. Um, you know, it can be based from experience, it can be based from inductive, deductive reasoning, and we even talked about like ethos, pathos, shared values, logos, all, all of that kind of stuff. When it comes to your quiz on Friday, and I'll zoom in on these, it's going to look remarkably similar to this, where you are going to have segments of statements, groups of three statements, and for those given three statements, you are going to have to identify which one you would identify, which one you would uh, see as being the claim, which one you think would be the warrant, which one would be the data, the grounds, the evidence. Your quiz is going to be 12 points. So how many sets of three are you going to have? Four, Four sets of three. You did that fairly quickly for being second period. Nice, nicely done. They are not going to be all mixed together. So it's not that a data statement down here for number one would fit with the claim for number 12. I'll have them grouped into sets of three. So from those three, you know, Taylor's going to figure out which one's the claim, which one's the warrant, which one's the, the data. Of the three, data, warrant, claim, um, which one do you think you want to start with if you're going to be identifying them? Claim. I would start with the claim, okay? So what is the argument, what's the statement that's being made? So for the first one, work sharing reduced unemployment in Germany. Germany is similar to the U.S., Work sharing will reduce unemployment in the U.S. Which one of those is a claim? It's an assertion that would be made. Work sharing will reduce unemployment in the U.S. That is definitely what the claim would be. What's the evidence? What is the support that this person seems to be using as to why work sharing will reduce unemployment in the U.S.? Because it did it in Germany. So Germany is going to be my evidence. Probably would be unstated, but in this case we're going to state it. What would be the connection then between the data and the claim? Well, it reduced unemployment in Germany. Germany is very similar to the U.S. You know, we're saying from an economic standpoint, so chances are it would reduce unemployment in the U.S. So data, warrant, claim. Those are the kinds of things we'll be identifying. Uh, next one. We're not going to do every single one, but just to kind of get a little bit more comfortable with it. Um, 
people over 65 are more dangerous drivers. Number of car accidents for people over 65 um, is twice that for people aged 18 to 25. You just can't see the word that over there. The number of driving accidents is an indicator of driving ability. So, Lena, which one do you think is the claim? Like, which one's the argument? So, people over 65 are more dangerous drivers. All right, that would be our claim. What's the evidence? Old people get in more accidents than young people. That says twice. If we're talking about my mom, it's probably like four times. What would be then our warrant? Well, the number of accidents, it's an indicator of driving ability. Therefore, if you're in more accidents, you're a more dangerous driver. Okay. Want to do a couple more? Are we okay? Leah, I need you to read the bottom line. No, we can't do that. Uh, how about this one? Year-round classes. Year-round classes lead to higher test scores. Schools in Japan have year-round classes, and Japanese students have higher test scores. U.S. schools should have year-round classes. Is the and it is the claim? And what's a key word in that one that would lead you to believe it's the claim? Should. So from a claim. This one is not a policy. This one is not fact. This one is judgment because of the word should. If you see the word should showing up in any of the statements, you want to really focus on that one to see could that be the claim. Because I don't want to say 100% of the time, but more often than not, if you see should, that's probably going to be the claim. So the claim, the argument, U.S. schools should have year-round classes. What's the evidence? Okay, schools in Japan have year-round classes, Japanese students have higher test scores, year-round classes lead to higher test scores, which is why the U.S. schools should therefore have it. All right, so keep an eye out for should if that is one that ends up coming up your way. Uh-oh. Josh, what do you see back there? Did they fall down or did they fall up? Because I know that's problematic for some people in this room. It's like I tailored this for you. Like Before every argumentation class, I plot, how can I involve Josh in an embarrassing manner? Sophia, have you fallen up the stairs? Many times. Many times. See, Jonah, you're, you're, you're a good person. Pardon? Well, we're going to go over some details here in, in a minute. I do like to have my legs elevated when I take a nap, so, you know, anything is possible. Do we have a slip or trip? Margaret and her husband got into a fight. So after Margaret and her husband get into a fight, she storms out of the house and left him at home alone all by himself. She goes to her country club, because they're fancy like that, where at a party, um, she attends, everyone at the party compliments Margaret on her dress and how well it fit her, her slender figure, and this made her feel, oh, so much better. While Charles is still at home by himself. Margaret left just before one in the morning and invited a few friends to follow her home for one more drink. So she leaves the country club, she's headed home, friends can come along with her. She gets home 10 minutes before they arrive, but when her friends ring the doorbell, she runs outside saying something terrible happened. Charles slipped and fell on the stairs. She doesn't say up or down, but just on, so anything could happen. He was coming down for another drink, so now she'd be falling down the stairs, um, and I think he's dead. Oh my goodness, what should I do? Police concluded that Charles did die from a wound on the head and confirmed the fact that he had been drunk. What do you think happened? So, taking a look at the picture, which I'm going to come back to, I want you to make a claim. I want you to, you know, what is your opinion? Did he slip? Did he trip? Um, was there any kind of malintent that, that was, or was he tripped? Is there malintent that is taking place? Um, 
based on the picture, what is going to be your evidence? What is going to be your data? What's going to be your, your reasoning for it? And then you're going to explain how this evidence would match your claim. So you're going to have an explanation or essentially a warrant for what occurred. So taking a look at the picture, and we can zoom in, do different things. I know people might want to look at different pieces of it. What do you see that would lead you to believe that he innocently slipped down the stairs, that he was tripped, that some kind of bad thing happened? So don't tell me what you think happened yet, but if you need me to zoom in on anything or question about the picture, we can take a look. His hands... Uh, bacon tastes good with everything. So something's cooking. Um, friends are coming over, which she, you know, invited for one more beverage cocktail. Maybe she has some bacon wrapped shrimp appetizers going. Maybe he just took a pound of bacon and decided to fry that because, hey, bacon's good. Um, Adele, you said hands. So there's this hand down here that it was holding a cup. So police report says that he definitely was drunk at the time, so there would be beverage. This hand, there's nothing there besides fingers. So good for him. Maybe. Because they had a fight, he cut off his ring finger. He's like, marriage over. You want to take a look? Morgan and Sophia want to look at the plan. Right, there's the knife. Plant's pretty innocuous. There's not a knife. All right, so, Kiara, you had a hand go up right away. Like, you had an opinion right off the bat. Okay, so what's your opinion? So your claim would be that, that he was tripped or attacked. The evidence would be the way he's laying... And the, the warn is kind of more like a logical reasoning that if you are to fall down the steps, you're not going to be like laying on your back if you're coming downstairs. Okay. Yep. Down the steps? Yes, down the steps. We're going first degree here. My evidence is... Well, so your, and I don't, I don't mean this in criticism, your evidence isn't about like a look here, but it's something more of what happened. Yeah. The fact that they had an argument, Margaret's just going to push it down the side. Uh -huh. okay. And then my warrant is, what's your warrant? What links, so what would link her being upset to intent? Because she's upset, she would want him dead. Yes. Essentially. And the evidence is Don't do that, guys. That's a big jump. There was a wound on the head, and you can just fall down the steps. Okay. Did this have any big plans for slaughter? No, not purposely, but. My head kind of went there. It was like, you know, you just hit him on the head. And then she's cooking the bacon so that, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's bacon. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely bacon. You're going to fry something. Bacon's gross. It's really like tomatoes. 
Not chewy. Crunchy. No, I need turkey. Perfectly done. Any other opinions? Oh All right. Evidence. Well, the claim, Margaret is lying. Evidence for this one going with the fact that Charles still has a glass in his hand, which Adele was looking at. The rule, when people fall downstairs, you would drop what you're carrying in order to try to brace yourself, stop yourself. So why would you fall down the stairs? Now, certainly the way that, that he's laying, as Kiara was looking at, would be something. You could also argue for if he were falling down the stairs, um, if it were an accident, the, um, the, the candelabras, the mirror might you know, be kind of disheveled a little bit because you would be putting your arm out to try to brace yourself. So the fact between those and what's in the hand that he doesn't have anything um, that, that he's trying to break his fall would lead us to believe that therefore she pushed him down. With the intent to kill. kill. Alright, why have a simple Toolman model when you can have a advanced Toolman model? So, you take a look at what we already have, data, evidence, grounds. We're going to add a few things to it. Underneath the uh, warrant and reasoning, and we're going to do definitions for each of these, you have backing, okay? So, backing would be going underneath the warrant. We'll explain what these things mean. So, you go to your image underneath the warrant, middle part, where there's the warrant reasoning, we have backing. Above the warrant, we have two things. We have modality. And I'll zoom in on all these again. We have modality, and we also have rebuttal. Rebuttal is going to be a tricky term because that word has multiple meanings depending upon the context in which it's being used in, in here. So we'll explain what we mean by rebuttal. So we have our warrant. Underneath we have backing. And then up above we have modality as well as Come on now. Maybe. There we go. Rebottle. For your quiz on Friday, we're solely taking a look at identifying the data, the claim, the warrant. You're not going to be doing this other stuff. Um, but when it comes to things that we're going to be doing this year, we're certainly going to be looking at backing modality rebuttal. So certainly still want to be familiar with them, uh, regardless of what's going to be on the, uh, the quiz for Friday. All right, backing straightforward. Um, it's just additional reasoning that allows for that leap, that inferential leap between the data, evidence, and the claim. So think of it as being like secondary claim, additional support for the warrant. So you're coming up with um, Leah's warrant was she was mad after the fight. Why? And because she was mad, that's why she would want to attack her husband. Why would being mad about a disagreement cause someone to want to? So, reasons as to why couples could have a fight, one of them could be cheating, infidelity, becoming upset. Um, 
could argue that there could be reasons for it, why it could be over a financial matter. But you're coming up with reasons as to why people could be upset. Um, the whole uh, the evidence that Pierre was using was the way that he was laying on the ground, right? So for the push. Um, so the warrant was the way in which he was laying would not match up with how a person falls down the steps. Backing could be, I've seen people fall down the steps at school all the time. They never land like that. They land face first with back back in the air and then they're stuck like a turtle. So you could be explaining additional evidence, reasoning for whatever your warrant is. So think of backing as a way to validate what your thought process ultimately So it's a, kind of like a secondary claim that's going to support the, the first one. Modality is going to be your degree of certainty. These aren't the only options, but you could say something like probably, possibly, apparently, likely. You could have a degree of certainty so far as a percentage standpoint, looking over years of data. I think that Jonah has an 84 percent chance of happening this class. 16 percent of people who sit in that chair over the years have not passed. Data, data support. I can go with all the facts and things. Really. So my degree of so as opposed to going, Jonah, you will pass the class. I'm going, Jonah, you will probably pass the class. Specifically, you have an 84 percent. Uh, usually you're not going to be percentage, so you'll go most likely, probably, more often than not. Um, what would be a couple words that you probably would not want to use as for an argument with your modality? Like what would definitely mean? It will happen. So definitely would be like an always. What would be the opposite of always? Never. So you would want to most likely avoid having an argument where you would go, this can never happen. This would always result in some kind of specific outcome. Because if Zelena's argument is going to be, oh, this is always true, if I'm on the other side, what do I just have to find to disprove her? One exception. Doesn't have to be the rule. It doesn't have to be a likely outcome. But all I have to do is find an exception, and according to the way that you have it worded with always, that would then be, you know, that that overall argument. All right? So you want to make sure that you stay away from that always, you stay away from never. Those are referred to as absolutes, where you're not leaving any wiggle room whatsoever. Right. Any questions about that? Most likely um, would be good. I think, uh, Josh, you were doing the female male teacher. Okay, I think that one it was worded with something like more often than not, um, women make better teachers than men. So if that had been worded, women always make better teachers than men, you would just have to find an example where no, this male is better than that female, um, and you could disprove Paige's argument. But by going more often than not, you can't have just like one example of a male being better than a female or vice versa. Um, so things like that. So those are kind of like the wording that be careful um, that you're not falling in the trap. Rebuttals. These are exceptions to the claim. Intervening factors. Here's the problem that people will run into the term rebuttal. What do we call a counter argument? After Paige gave her argument and you gave your argument, Paige came back and gave her counter argument or a term that also gets used is she gave a rebuttal. Okay, which is correct term. Rebuttal is a counter argument that one person would give towards another's claim. However, within the Tillman model, a rebuttal is you acknowledging an exception to your claim. So you just want to make sure you understand the difference between a Tillman model rebuttal and like a debate kind of rebuttal. Debate rebuttal, you're going to you know, do a counter argument, you're going to attack, something like that. For the Tillman model, you Tillman model, you are acknowledging that there could be some things that could um, get in the way. The white sock. Probably not going to win the pandemic. Not this year. We know this year just like this. But 
the next year they're probably not going to. Unless, how could the White Sox ever win? Okay. So unless Tim Anderson has a great year, because they have great, great all-time records, like, like 80 and one. The Minnesota Twins cease to exist. You play the Detroit Tigers every single day. Those are ways in which you could win. Probably not going to happen, but those would be intervening factors. Blake, do you give the Steelers a chance on Sunday night against the Patriots? I don't think so. That's probably a good move. Yeah. Most Steelers fans don't like football after they watch Steelers. And <laughs> Congratulations on the single season of the Josh, you know they have eight guys on their team with 21 ones and one? I did. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, how does that <laughs> Sophia is going to quit tennis. <laughs> no, I'm not. Sophia is not going to quit I'm tennis. I'm going to see what happens if I just keep if I Unless she loses every match then maybe the in the, the next three weeks, and, and then she'll quit. <laughs> so the way that these rebuttals kind of go, you acknowledge that there could be an exception to the rule. All right. A lot of Steeler fans I asked like, and then we went back to the Twins. Do you give the Steelers a chance of winning on Sunday nights and against the Patriots and Foxborough? Most are going no. Unless Tom Brady just doesn't show up, then maybe they have a chance. Maybe we'll over. And then there can't be a football, and then they can't play the game, and therefore they cannot lose. That's cool. Yeah, but therefore no one can win. Hey, <laughs> it's a chance. Though. It's something better than what they had before. So rebuttals are going to be exceptions to the claims that you acknowledge, which this can be a powerful thing to do, because if from the beginning, when you are presenting your argument, if in the beginning, when you're presenting your argument, you acknowledge that there are some exceptions, that could, no pun intended, deflate some of the argument that the other side is going to do because you've taken some air, some steam away from that argument. So you can kind of be proactive and go, listen, I'm not going to say this is true 100% of the time, but here are some exceptions that could kind of be the argument. But for the most part, then you can kind of continue on with whatever argument factor you're taking a look at. You know, lace shoes are better than Velcro shoes unless you're playing basketball and the Velcro helps keep your laces tied. You know, would be an exception. But for the average person, lace shoes would be better than Velcro. Would be a way that you could kind of approach that overall argument. And, of course, this froze and you can't see it. There we go. We're back. Clearly, this did not happen. But, much like the White Sox, the Pirates could have one of the better starting pitching staffs in the National League. So, the overall evidence would suggest that experts agree that good starting pitching is critical to making the playoffs. So, therefore, the Pirates will probably make the playoffs this year. Assuming they win, like, the next 30 games in a row. What could be some rebuttals? However, injuries can quickly debilitate a major league pitching staff. Playoff teams traditionally are in the top 10 in team ERA and opponent batting average. So notice I have some additional backing here in this phrase. What's my modality in that playoff teams traditionally are in the top 10 in team ERA and opponent batting average? What's my modality word? doesn't say always, but it says... Yeah. Oh, traditionally. traditionally, which would kind of be like typically, you know, it's, 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 it's common for this to happen, but it's not saying absolutely always. But there was a rebuttal. Injuries could kind of change this depending what happens um, or other teams perform better than expected or whatnot. The Pirates will probably, again, you have that modality taking place, make the playoffs this year. This claim proved to be 100% false. So if you take a look at this example, and this is similar to what you'd be doing in our quiz, but we've added more things. What is our modality? What would be our rebuttal? That kind of stuff. So it is time for you to start working on your term paper. 
Your term paper will take about one month to complete. It took me one month to complete mine. You and I work at about the same pace, unless you don't care about your grade as much as I do. Which one of these would be the argument, the claim, the opinion? What has to happen or what should happen? So you're saying this one? Not quite. I'd say what's what's the the suggestion that's being thrown out there? It's time to start. So it's time to start working on your term paper. Why should you start working on your term paper? It's going to take about a month. What would suggest that it's going to take about a month? It took me one month. You and I work at the same pace. So these three here work together. Moda or the, uh, the rebuttal would be, unless you don't care about your grade as much as I do, then it might be something that you get done in one week or one day or one hour. So you're identifying the various parts that are going to help substantiate that overall claim. But for what you're going to be doing on Friday, it's just going to be claim, data, warrant. Those are the only three that you ultimately have to work. When we get to like talking about your formal arguments, that's when we'll make sure that your modality, your rebuttal, all that stuff is in there. Any questions? So tomorrow, stuff that we're going to cover, we're going to go over some logical fallacies. That's not going to be part of Friday's quiz. That'll be stuff that we're going to be doing for next week. Um, by this time next week, we're going to start formulating resolutions that we want to explore. So, you know, you can, it can be current event, it can also certainly be, you know, other types of things. But think about topics that you might have interest in exploring. We're going to probably come up with about four or five that, that we'll seriously consider. So, there's issues, whether it be pop culture, traditional, political, whatever, start thinking about it. Or Sophia's test, or you can debate that.